We agreed that we should go for a short drive to see if I could drive safely. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down the most absurd PR scandals faced in the Houses of Parliament. That was a mistake, and I apologise. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 20. Ghost Candidates Following reform's triumph in the 2024 election, winning five seats and earning a massive percentage of the total vote share, the party came under even more scrutiny. People were saying, this guy's fake. He doesn't exist. We can't track him down. This took shape as the bizarre allegations that the candidate's reform had stood in many of its constituencies weren't real people. Nigel Farage said that the candidates were, quote, paper candidates real people who went on to the ballot papers just to split the right-wing votes, but journalists were convinced that over 100 reformers didn't exist. Mark, well, are you real? Evening, Patrick. Uh, I, I hope I'm here. Am I here? Am I real? <laughs> not from that picture. <laughs> you are. Um, and you're a real man, are you, Mark? At least one reformer, Mark Matlock, has had to publicly dispute the idea that he's AI-generated after people took issue with the strange picture on his leaflets. How did it make you feel that people thought that you were an AI-generated bot? I loved it. Free advertisement. It's great. Number 19. Kissgate. Downing Street said the matter was closed. The front page of every single national newspaper suggests otherwise. Matt Hancock's tenure as one of the most inept health secretaries in living memory came to an end in 2021, when The Sun released security footage from his office of him copping off with one of his aides, Gina Colodangelo. He subsequently resigned and ended up leaving his wife for Colodangelo. The health secretary, Matt Hancock, caught kissing an aide, breaching his own social distancing rules at the time. With the scandal earning the name Kissgate. The big issue was that Hancock had been doing this while social distancing guidelines had still been in place. Yes, while people were unable to visit their dying relatives in hospital, Matt Hancock was getting his end away. And what many want to know is, what was the process by which she got this job and does her appointment breached the ministerial code. He finally stood down as an MP in 2024. Number 18, the expenses scandal. What the MPs were planning to do was to publish this stuff with all the salient details redacted. In 2009, a scandal that changed parliament forever broke after the unredacted contents of MPs' expenses were acquired and published by The Telegraph. A guy at the other end said, hello, would you be interested in uh, looking at a disc of every single MP's expenses? And I said, yes, I would. This came after years of MPs trying and failing to have themselves made exempt from the Freedom of Information Act and the public finally got all the gory details of what MPs had been claiming from the public purse. How, how far are you away from... from uh, West 37 Michigan? miles. And you need two houses. <laughs> While a lot of the scandal focused on second homes, it was the more absurd claims that stuck in people's minds. Garlic presses, mugs of Horlicks, light bulbs, fancy toilet seats, and most infamously, a floating duck island supposedly worth over a grand. Many MPs resigned over this, hundreds of thousands of pounds were repaid, and some even got criminal convictions. I have never, actually. ever claimed my full allowance. I have always claimed the amount. Uh, well, I mean, you can I publish them. I've always published them on my website. Number 17, Evil Plotters. The bookie's favorite to follow Sunak as Tory party leader, Kemi Badenoch, has had the support of many high-profile conservatives during her tenure on the front benches. Chief among them was the ever-unpopular Michael Gove, who was scheming behind the scenes to position Badenoch as a future leader. They were doing this alleged scheming in a WhatsApp group they'd named Evil Plotters, the existence and name of which was eventually leaked to the press, though Badenoch denied everything. Their plot to oust Rishi Sunak ended up being completely impotent, however, Sunak resigned following 2024's historic defeat for the Conservatives. 
Number 16, Butte House. Fortunately, in ending the Butte House Agreement, in the manner that I did, I clearly underestimated the level of hurt and upset that caused. Not long after the spectacular downfall of Nicola Sturgeon as Scotland's first minister, and the party was rocked with more instability, leading to the departure of another leader. The Butte House Agreement was a power-sharing arrangement between the Scottish Greens and the SNP, with Green politics gaining traction in the 2020s so far, this was a popular agreement until Hamza Youssef unceremoniously pulled out of it. A leader who arguably sabotaged himself after burning bridges in a week of high drama. This came after voicing support for it during his leadership campaign. People were outraged, not in the least the Greens, and Youssef had to resign after barely a year in Scotland's top job. The SNP was all but wiped out in the 2024 election. Will you resign if you lose this week? Again, I'm not planning to, uh, of course, lose the vote of no confidence. I'm planning to win that vote of no confidence. Number 15, Traingate. For years, rail renationalisation has been a popular policy and was a key pledge in Jeremy Corbyn's Labour manifesto. The problem that many passengers face every day on the trains, commuters and long distance travellers. Today, this train is completely ramp packed. To promote his policy in 2016, a year ahead of his first election as leader of the opposition, he posted a video of him sitting on the floor of a virgin train having struggled to find a seat. But the video was disrupted by none other than Richard Branson, with CCTV being released showing that there were empty seats on the train. They say at 11.07, Jeremy Corbyn walked past empty, unreserved seats in Coach H. A minute later, he passed empty but reserved seats in Coach F. Corbyn defended himself by saying he specifically wanted two seats next to each other so that he could sit with his wife, but his policy was completely drowned out by discussion of the scandal. The reality is there's not enough trains, we need more of them, and they're also incredibly expensive. Isn't that a good case for public ownership? Number 14, The Honey Trap Scandal. A senior conservative backbencher, William Ragg, finds himself at the centre of a sex scam that has rocked Parliament. This began in 2023, but only broke as a news story in 2024, when numerous MPs were suspended over it. Over a dozen men in Whitehall were targeted by the anonymous honey trapper, who got hold of their phone numbers and began sending flirtatious text messages, having claimed to have met them recently. For whatever reason, they all fell for it, with at least two Lib Dems receiving messages through Grinder. He's admitted handing over personal contacts of fellow MPs to a man he met on a dating app. Some Tory MPs were targeted too, with some even sending the honey trapper explicit messages. Months on, and police made an arrest in connection with the case and the person involved was a member of the Labour Party. It's still not clear what exactly was going on, since Labour members were also targeted. But I spoke to one MP who was targeted by this scam, who told me it was so obviously a scam that they deleted it immediately. They said it was extraordinary that anybody had replied at all. Number 13, no money. And people are going to ask themselves a very simple question in the next election. Am I better off? than I was at the last election. In 2010, Gordon Brown's Labour had been voted out in favour of the Tory Lib Dem coalition government. On his way out, Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Liam Byrne, left a cheeky note behind for David Laws, his Lib Dem successor, saying that there was no money left. Well, I've got to stop you there. You are the former Chief Secretary of the Treasury who left that infamous note Indeed. when Labour left office saying, I'm afraid there is no money. Laws quickly leaked this to the press, and the public wasn't having any of it. It's the kind of joke that goes down well in Whitehall, but not with ordinary people, who were furious that Labour would mock the sorry state the economy was in in 2010. The traditional note left by every chief secretary since the 1930s, I might I add. don't think so. A note saying, no, no. I'm afraid there is no money. The government brought this out to hammer Labour in opposition for years after the fact. Number 12, 
Gamble Gates. When his own parliamentary private secretary, Craig Williams, walked into a local betting shop and placed a bet on there being a July election. The 2024 election was coloured by this large scandal, when numerous figures were found to have been betting on the date a snap election would be held. Sunak calling the election on the back of interest rates plunging was a surprise to some, but not to all. A week later, one of the Prime Minister's close protection officers was arrested for allegedly also placing a bet. Sunak's private secretary, Craig Williams, was the first domino to fall after betting £100 on a July election. Others, including Sunak's police bodyguards, were also found to have been placing bets. On June 20th, it was revealed the Gambling Commission was investigating Laura Saunders, candidate for Bristol North West. This was great for Labour at first, but eventually, Labour and the Lib Dems were also caught up in it, all using insider information for an easy payday when the polls opened. Two weeks after the story first broke, the Conservatives finally withdrew support for their two candidates. Number 11, D-Day. Prime Minister. Gosh, hello. It's sorry to I'm have well, kept thanks you. you. No, not at all. I know we you've been in Normandy. Bit, yeah, it all just ran over. There was, it of course. was incredible, but it, it just ran over it. One last scandal from 2024, and it is, of course, Rishi Sunak's D-Day snub. Sunak jetted home from the celebrations for the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings in France early. Starmer stayed and talked with veterans for much longer, while Nigel Farage jumped on this, accusing Sunak of being unpatriotic. What happened was completely wrong, and the Prime Minister has rightly apologised for that. But what was so urgent that Sunak had to leave early? An interview with ITV, which was completely overshadowed by the time it aired, days later, by the fact that everybody knew he'd come back from D-Day to film it. It was the same interview in which he said he'd suffered as a child by not having Sky TV at home. Famously, Sky TV. <laughs> okay. so, that was something that we never had growing up, actually. Number 10, The Mound. It's a really important initiative uh, to encourage people to come back into the centre of London. In the summer of 2021, Westminster Council unveiled a truly atrocious tourist attraction to try and bring more people to London. That's in spite of the fact that London already had plenty of actual good things for people to see that aren't an artificial pile of mud. The mound, which is shockingly its real name, was met with resounding disappointment not only because it's an eyesore, because at the beginning the council planned to charge people £6.50 for the privilege of climbing to the top of it. Even worse, the thing cost around £6 million to build a figure that the council sheepishly keeps increasing. Something new, something interesting that people hadn't been able to do before and that this really fits the bill. It's now London's biggest embarrassment. Number nine, fields of wheat. What's the naughtiest thing you ever did? Oh goodness me. Of all the things Theresa May did and said at the height of her political career, this will be the thing that follows her for the rest of her life. During a routine interview in the run-up to the 2017 snap election, May was asked what the naughtiest thing she's ever done was, to which she replied that it was running through fields of wheat as a child. I have to confess, when me and my friends sort of used to run through the fields of wheat, um, the farmers weren't too pleased about that. Fields of wheat quickly became a meme, with people across the political spectrum full of second-hand embarrassments for the Prime Minister. Some years later, May revealed that of all the mistakes in her career, she believed the Fields of Wheat incident was the biggest. It's going to haunt her forever. Did you uh, have any urge to jump out the car and run through any fields of wheat on the way here? I'm far too responsible a citizen to run through a wheat field. Number 8, the Prescott Punch. Labour's Deputy Prime Minister was out campaigning in real Wales back in 2001 when a dissatisfied member of the electorate decided to lob a few eggs at him. Though getting public abuse is a standard part of being a politician in the UK, maybe it was a bad day because Prescott retaliated by punching the egger in the face with a nasty left hook. Other camera angles make it clear exactly what happened. He definitely should have thought twice before egging a former boxer and clearly didn't bargain on Prescott, giving as good as he got. Prescott then became one of the few politicians whose career was able to recover after decking a member of the public, 
and has since been photographed wearing boxing gloves and holding a cream egg. Number 7. Socially Divisive A constitutional monarch, the Queen isn't allowed to get involved in politics. She's not supposed to express opinions on the officials, the public elects, or their policies. But in 1986, some comments from the Queen were leaked to the press that appeared to show her disappointments with many of Margaret Thatcher's policies, still PM at the time. Today, people will be most familiar with this rift because it was depicted in The Crown Series 4. Always a mistake to assume just because people are privileged, they lack grit. It's not clear whether the Queen actually did say those things, but they were still widely reported and caused conflict between Buckingham Palace and Downing Street, all because the Queen may have said the same thing everybody else was saying. Number 6. Geronimo the Alpaca I cannot consent to have a healthy animal euthanized. The saga of Geronimo the alpaca reached a sad end in 2020 when the debate around whether Geronimo should be euthanized or not returned to the public eye once again. The issue is that Geronimo was likely infected with bovine tuberculosis, which could have spread to humans. But what prompted this renewed interest in Geronimo, we hear you ask? You're not taking him off this farm. Well, leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, decided to make his thoughts on Geronimo public, saying that putting Geronimo down was the best course of action. Managing TB outbreaks is obviously important, but Starmer spent the following weeks plagued by angry members of the public who wanted him to speak out in support of the doomed animal. I'm absolutely disgusted by this government. Number 5. Go Home Vans Another inscrutable political decision from Theresa May, in 2013 she was the Home Secretary when David Cameron was still PM. It's been described as gimmicky, divisive, disastrous, cheap and a return to the 70s politics of the National Front. One of her most ridiculous endeavours was the infamous go-home vans, as they came to be known. May sent large vans ordering illegal immigrants to go home or face arrest around areas of the UK with high immigrant populations, apparently trying to scare them into getting themselves deported. I think politicians should be willing to step up to the plate and say when they think something actually hasn't been uh, as good an idea, and I think it, they were too blunt an instrument. The vans were a political disaster for the Tories, sending a very unpleasant message to the UK's many immigrants. To make matters worse, six years later, the Tories determined that telling someone to go home was a hate crime, making themselves look like massive hypocrites and ridiculous all over again. Well, the Prime Minister now, on reflection, also take the opportunity to call out and condemn the racism of the go-home vans that she created in coalition government with the Liberal Democrats. Yeah. Number 4. Ed Miliband's Sandwich Politicians love a good photo op, but a bad photo can follow you forever. Ed Miliband found this out the hard way when he was snapped eating a bacon sandwich in 2014. They happened to catch him making a particularly funny face while he ate. Open wide, Ed! <laughs> I, think, I think this is good PR for him, because although they actually say that people who eat messily are very good lovers. Though anybody could have an equally embarrassing photo taken while you're tucking into a delicious bacon sunny, Miliband has never been able to live it down. The meme followed Miliband for months while he campaigned for the 2015 general election, which he ultimately lost to David Cameron by some margin. He's repeatedly stated that he doesn't blame the sandwich, but many of his critics certainly did. Number 3. Barnard Castle We agreed that we should go for a short drive to see if I could drive safely. By now, we all know that if you're in the UK and need an eye test in a pinch, you'd better head north and visit Barnard Castle, one of County Durham's premier tourist attractions. That's because in 2020, Chief Political Advisor Dominic Cummings took his family all the way up to Durham in a clear violation of lockdown rules. It was one rule for politicians and another for everybody else, something the public did not take kindly to. Cummings alleged that he went to Barnard Castle not for a recreational day out, but for an eye test, driving his kids there while wearing glasses that were the wrong prescription. A very safe thing to do. Ultimately, Cummings was forced to resign. Well, Dominic's eyesight was good enough. That was the, the whole point of the, the journey, to determine that, uh, that he could drive safely. Number 2. Bigoted Woman 
In 2010, Gordon Brown was the Prime Minister, standing for election against leader of the opposition, David Cameron, who of course won. Well, how are you going to get us out of all this debt, because Gordon? Of... Though Brown didn't poll particularly high during his tenure after Blair left, there was one specific incident that may have sealed his fate as the election's loser. That was a disaster. After talking to a disillusioned Labour voter, Gillian Duffy, Brown got back into his car and called her a bigoted woman, not realising his microphone was still on. What did she say? Oh, everything. She just herself, a bigoted woman. Right? Said she used to be Labour. I mean, it's ridiculous. The resulting scandal was nicknamed Bigot Gate, with Brown forced to apologise to Duffy for his remarks. The incident has plagued Gordon Brown throughout the rest of his career. Number 1. Piggate Who knew that an unauthorized biography with absolutely no sources would cause so much fuss? Nobody, it seems, because hashtag Piggate took the UK by storm when it emerged in 2015. An anecdote was published in the book Call Me Dave, claiming that when Cameron was a youth, he went through a dining society invitation rites involving a certain part of his anatomy and a dead pig. And that's all the detail we can go into. And even that he took part in a bizarre initiation ceremony for a dining club involving a pig. It was in the news for weeks, not in the least because four years earlier, Charlie Brooker wrote an infamous episode of Black Mirror that sees the Prime Minister have relations with a pig. Except Cameron didn't have the excuse of saving a princess. Let us know in the comments which party you think is the most unfit to be in Downing Street. Don't you think that's a bit hypocritical? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.